Welcome to Game Theorem, where we have serious discussions about absurd entertainment. No man ever profited anything without costing another man everything. Edward Kagame, founder of Liberate. I'm Kyle. I'm Kira. And today we're going to be talking about a TV show. So this is going to be separate from our game discussions. We're going to be talking about the show Continuum. It is an amazing show. So we have just a little bit of background for you. The show, you can find it on Netflix. It's a Canadian-produced sci-fi television show. It has a strong female lead, Mm -hmm. and it's about time travel. Yes. Well, it's also about a corporate future. So we felt like this would be a good follow-up to do after our last deep dive, Borderlands. Mm Mm-hmm, definitely. So we're going to be talking about this. Uh, If you haven't seen the show, we really recommend it. It shows what a corporate future would be like, and it goes through the mechanics of time travel and shows that undoing that isn't going to be as simple as you think. The characters themselves don't actually know the temporal mechanics of time travel, and they have to figure it out as they go. Exactly, and it is really an amazing show, so and, go and like, watch it. If and like you I can. said, yes, strong female lead, you mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. And uh, we will definitely be spoiling the entire plot here, so if you want to go watch it, then go watch it and listen to this later. Yes, or if you don't care about that or you want to just hear what the story is, stick around. If you have watched it and you're just extremely confused by all the time travel, we're going to be explaining all that. Mm-hmm. Even if you haven't watched or heard of the show before, it's an interesting story. And I always really liked uh, taking all the you know convoluted time travel timeline webs and straightening them out. So that's what I'm going to be doing here for this show. Mm-hmm. I think it makes it a lot more um, digestible, some mm-hmm. like accessible. All right. So we're going to just kind of be uh, taking turns talking about it and going through all the timelines for you guys mm-hmm. and talk about just how scare, scary it is that these things could theoretically happen. Maybe not time travel, but corporations are scary, man. Yeah, really scary. All right. Kira, would you like to start? All right. Oh, wait. Um, I should mention there are a bunch of timelines. Uh-huh. And we're going to be starting on the first timeline. We're going to go through it, then we'll talk about the next timeline. We'll just keep going that way. All right. All right, let's go. In the first timeline, in the far future... Wait, I- the, this timeline is the utopian timeline. Oh, so you want to yeah. do our names for them? Yes. Okay. In the far future, in the utopian timeline, a biomechanical android is created with the capability to traverse time as an observer and avoid creating alternate timelines. However, he makes a mistake at some point and accidentally alters the timeline, making it impossible for him to return home. (laughs) (laughs) Robo-Jesus. Okay, so that's pretty much all that we know about the Utopian timeline. Yes, and this is the first thing that happens chronologically in this universe. Well, fifth dimensionally. Yeah. (laughs) Because then after that, we have what's called the Freelance timeline. At some point in time, this timeline diverges when the traveler makes his mistake. Uncontrolled time travel technology results in numerous reset of timelines till eventually this timeline diverges. That will be further explained later on. You'll see why that is. Mm -hmm. Now, in the 2000s to the 2040s in this timeline, the governments fail around the world when corporations grow in power. And then the corporations ended up bailing out the government and taking power. Like a corporate bailout, but in reverse. Mm Mm-hmm. In the 2060s, the Global Corporate Congress takes up control and power over the world. In the 2080s, time travel technology is first developed and proliferated. At first, the use of time travel is limited, but some illegally take the technology to benefit themselves. For decades, the world precariously endures people fighting over time travel technology. Every time someone goes back, the timeline is reset with the change they made. These decades are a mishmash of convoluted events as chronology is thrown out the window. There is literally no sense to this time period because so many people just took time travel and used it. Yeah, so uh, like 
probability and luck like you would you would see uh luck change as people or altering their fates mm -hmm. and you would also see a lot of duplicate people just appearing out of nowhere yeah now in the 2140s an all-out war breaks out as corporations fight for the power of time travel and as of this time this is the most recent timeline many people try to forbid the use of time travel but there's clear evidence of the time travel abuse from the past decades. Well, many of the corporations tried to forbid it. Yes. While they're also fighting over it. Mm -hmm. So an organization is founded to prevent further time travel abuse. And this organization eventually becomes known as the freelancers. Because you have like corporations, you got freelancers, like they're on, the, you know, on their own making mm -hmm. money. They designate themselves as the guardians of history. And they crack down on the use of time travel from everyone, including themselves. Now, one of these freelancers makes a great sacrifice to travel to the year 1100 to begin the freelancer organization in the past and ensure that history is never changed. And um, this freelancer brung a plethora of information and technology from the 2140s when they went back. Yeah, this is like one of the extremely rare times where a freelancer is given permission to use time travel technology. Yeah, and it's only to make sure that the freelancers were created in such a distant past that there is never, you know, this whole time travel abuse in the first place. So... The, the Utopian timeline and the Freelancer timeline, not much is known about them except for the fact that they happened. Mm -hmm. So now with the Freelancers going throughout history all the way from the 1100s, uh, that's when they decide to really make sure that the corporate future comes to pass, which brings us to our third timeline, the corporate timeline. Now, this is the timeline that the freelancers protect and ensure happens. Like the one that they came from. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the year is 1100. This timeline diverges when a freelancer travels back in time to begin the organization and ensures that a corporate future comes to pass. They recruit freelancers throughout history to aid in their mission. But keep in mind, they themselves never time travel. Mm-hmm. Now, in 1995, a former freelancer has a child named Alex Sadler. He then goes rogue from the freelancers and hides his identity by creating the Corporation of Pyron and the alias of Mr. Escher. In 2008, the world's banking industry nearly collapsed due to speculation and mortgage and the, it's terrible. You guys might remember this. It was horrible. Anyway, their CEOs were bailed out and none of them faced charges. <laughs> now, in 2012, a building in City Plaza is bombed in an anti-corporate act of terrorism. And on the same day, a man named Edward Kagami is born. In 2014, a freelancer named Curtis Chen goes rogue as well, and he steals their time travel technology and uses it to travel in a forward in time to the 2060s. After this, Alec, Alec Sadler, develops SadTech and ArcNet, which revolutionizes encryption and online security. Yeah, SadTech was the company, ArcNet was the product, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's like... It, like, basically fixes hacking. Mm -hmm. I mean, not entirely. It's just much harder now because they're using, like, wall-to-wall -wall encryption all the time. Yes, and this is Adlik Sadler, the child of that freelancer who went rogue. Although he doesn't know that. No, he does not know that. <laughs> In 2019, Canada and the United States merge into what's called the North American Union. Oh, I didn't. Well, well that's next year. Huh? <laughs> In 2028, Alex Sadler, CEO of SadTech, perfects the Halo bracelet, revolutionizing medical health monitoring and user data aggregation. Just like the real DNA companies. <laughs> Basically, this bracelet had a complete medical and genetic makeup on anyone who wore it and was also just designed to... Um, help people stay healthy and stuff and mm -hmm. that's how they marketed it well i mean it did do that though like it was very beneficial to have but yeah it it collected every single bit of data that it got yep you're the product mm -hmm. 
So, and then in 2028, Alex Sadler, who's CEO of SatTech, he, oh wait, no, you already said that one, my yeah. bad. <laughs> in 2030, there a company called Vickerdale Enterprises ends up controlling the entirety of food cultivation. Yeah. Now in 2035, governments begin to collapse around the world. They just weren't able to keep up with funding compared to corporations. Mm-hmm. And then corporations like SadTech begin to say that when these governments end up collapsing, that everyone needs to do their part to rebuild society. So they end up creating debtors' prisons that strip people of their citizenship, and they become implanted with chips that turn them into mindless drones. After this, Julian Randall, Alex's stepbrother, who is known as Theseus at this time, leads a revolution by shutting down the labor camps ar across the Union. And the corporations spin this as that he's a terrorist who killed millions. And But he knows differently because the people he killed were the people who were stripped of their citizenship and made into mindless, mindless drones. Yeah, the corporations were arguing that they weren't dead, even though really their brain power was, was, well, they were vegetables, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Anyway, by 2040, global population hits 11 billion. And then in 2041, Matthew Kellogg is born. Remember that name. Mm -hmm. 2057, the corporate companies end up bailing out all of these failing governments and they sell them to the people. So everything's going on track with this corporate timeline, mm -hmm. maybe even more so. Yeah. <laughs> In 2058, historical information from previous years are purged from school databases. So no one remembers the whole debtor's prison incident. Mm-hmm. In 2060, the Corporate Rights Act is passed by the remaining governments. This act makes corporations legally considered individuals with yeah. equal rights. Yeah. That might sound familiar because our government basically has that policy today. It's just not legally in the code. Well, now in 2060, it is. Mm -hmm. Now, the Global Corporate Congress formed by the corporations and the governments they bought are a single government govern, governing entity at this point. Sometime in the 2060s, Edward Kagame, remember him? He was uh, born a while ago. He's old. Mm -hmm. He leads peaceful protest against the Global Corporate Congress or the GCC, but they are brutally crushed by corporate security forces. Kagame ends up finding a, or founding uh, Liberate, a terrorist organization with the goal of bringing democracy back by any violent means. Mm -hmm. He tried peaceful and that didn't work. Okay, so at this point, there is a household inspection and our main female lead, Kira, accident. Kira Cameron. Yeah, Kira Cameron. She's just a, like a young woman at this point. Mm -hmm. She ends up accidentally revealing some of her grandmother's old books when the Global Corporate Congress attempt to imprison her grandmother for contraband. Kira offers to enlist in the military and then give her pension to the inspector, and he agrees to this. Corruption, yay. <laughs> in 2065, the GCC crushes Liberate, forcing the rebels to move underground. In 2069, the last known elephant dies in India. And then Kira, she becomes deathly ill to a disease that was secretly a bioweapon released by the company Samanto. But she's saved when they release the cure for a profit. Mm -hmm. And then Kira finds out that she's pregnant and marries Greg Cameron. In 2070, Kira leaves the military to join the Vancouver Corporate Protective Services as a protector. Her son is born between the two jobs. In the 2070s, Liberate releases a drug called Flash that lets people live their fantasies, but they lose touch with reality. Kira's sister jumps off a building while using this drug. That was so traumatizing. Mm -hmm. Kira... Uh, She's transferring the Liberate prisoner Jaworski when their vehicle crashes at a poor gleaner community where people are just trying to survive and grow their own foods. Mm -hmm. Kagame is secretly hiding there trying to recruit Sonia, a, a woman named Sonia. She's really smart. Mm -hmm. Now, Kagame 
bit into an apple that he put into a shipment that was on its way to Alec. And DNA scanners identify where this apple came from, and Alec launches a missile strike to wipe out the Liberate threat, which kills the entire community that Kagami was at. And remember, he was hiding in that same community with Sonya. So Kira and her prisoner, they barely survive the attack. And then Kagame leads Sonya away from it, having instigated the attack just to convince her that the corporations are evil. Now, he purposefully bit into that apple. Knowing this was going to happen. Yeah, knowing that Alec would trace it to where he was Mm -hmm. and launch a missile strike there. Because he he saw a crate of apples and it was saying where it was going to. And he just literally takes one off and bites it and puts it back. Mm Mm-hmm. And he knew this would happen. Because he wanted to convince Sonya that they were evil. And I, I honestly think he was right that, that they are evil. But man, drastic means for democracy, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not approving of that, just so you know. Don't kill people. Yes. Killing people is bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Kira goes on a rescue mission when a skyscraper catches fire. Instead of rescuing the executive that had purchased fire priority, she rescues a little girl. She's fined an exorbitant amount for the death of the executive, but her colleagues are there to support her. Mm -hmm. Liberates Matthew Kellogg is captured by the CPS, and they kill his daughter. Sonia Valentine is captured as well. Oh, wait, I think that was supposed to say sister. Kellogg's sister. sister? Yeah. I I, I don't even know who's sister. He didn't have a daughter. Kellogg's sister. They killed Kellogg's sister. Oh, okay. His his relative. Mm Mm-hmm. He has a daughter, please. <laughs> yeah. He's he's like a charming, suave kind of guy. He's, yeah. He's a Don Juan. What's that? It's a sort of like, it's a macho man who gets all the ladies, but like with a Spanish twist. He's not really macho. He's like the least physically strong out of all of them. No, but like the charming guy who smoozes all the ladies and who always gets whatever he wants. All right. Mm -hmm. Except he's a terrorist being captured, but okay. (laughs) So in 2076, liberates Travis and Curtis. Bomb. Oh, we didn't mention that. Remember Curtis, the rogue freelancer? He ends up joining Liberate. Mm -hmm. And Travis is a former super soldier that used to work for the corporations. Anyway, they joined Liberate because they don't like the, the ruling class. They end up bombing the GCC building with one of their spies, Garza, on backup. They killed 30,000 people, hoping just to kill the 20 members of the GCC. Yes. After this, Kagami is captured and brought to prison, where he meets Theseus. And he's extremely honored to finally meet Theseus, because he's inspired him. Yes, uh, the whole Liberate um, movement was founded Mm. on Theseus' teachings. Yeah, and the GCC has imprisoned him for decades, but they can't kill him because they know that would start a riot. Mm Mm-hmm. Alec's wife ends up committing suicide, which leads him to regret everything that he's done creating this corporate future. Mm-hmm. And then Alec gets a vision of the Traveler and a, his younger self. He learns of the possibility of time travel and decides to try to make it a reality to change history. And this is so that um, he can maybe not regret his life so much. <laughs> Alec ends up showing Kagame the time travel device, and he gives him instructions on a plan to change history. Mm -hmm. Now Garza tries to assassinate Alec, but Alec tells her about the plan with Kagame and tells her to kill his younger self. Once they go back in time, he gives her the special mission. Mm -hmm. The leaders of Liberate, they're all captured, including Kagame, Verta, Valentine, Ingram, Garza, Kellogg, Jaworski, and Curtis. In 2077, Liberate is scheduled to be executed, but Alex guards give them the time travel device. They activate it using the fusion power one floor below. Can I explain this next part? Okay. So when they when they use it during the execution, they use this device. Everyone in the room is sent backwards in time based on their proximity to the device. Liberate, Alec told Liberate that it was going to send them to 2062 so that they would have a, 
an earlier start at trying to rebel against the GCC before Liberty is crushed. Alec lied. It instead sends them back to 2012, much earlier in history. So the person who was closest to the, to the time travel device, Kagame, he sent to 2012. The rest of Liberate and the guard at the time, Kira Cameron, are sent a few weeks earlier. Alex's son, Jason, who was next to the fusion reactor, he's sent to 1992. And Kira's partner, who was way back in the room, she's sent to 1977. Mm-hmm. And that's that timeline, because now they go back in time and we, we have a new timeline. Yeah, exactly. This is the fourth timeline, I think. I and think this so. timeline is the Doom timeline. Okay, so talk about how this timeline starts. In 1970, not, eh, 1975, sorry, this timeline diverges when that time travel device sends those that were in the room back in time. And starting in 1975, um, Kira's partner Elena arrives, and that's and that, when the timeline diverges. And in 1992 is when Jason Sadler arrives. Mm-hmm. And in 2012 is when Liberate and Kira arrive from the future of the old timeline, and Kagami arrived a few weeks later. Kira ends up meeting a teenage version of Alex Sadler you, by using her implanted chip's CPS network, of which he was just now prototyping. She joins the Vancouver Police Department by posing as a federal agent under something called Section 6, well, as you know, posing as running a Liberate task force. Her partner is assigned, and his name is Carlos Finegra. Mm -hmm. Kellogg decides to abandon Liberate and play both sides. He uses his knowledge of the future to be advantageous to him. Mm -hmm. Liberate makes themselves known to the public to gather support from anti-corporate act activists. They decide to, that even though they arrived much earlier than they thought, that's not going to stop them from trying to prevent the corporate future from happening. Mm -hmm. Now, after this, Kira meets her grandmother, Lily, who is considering actually getting an abortion. Oh, that was so difficult for me, you know, because I feel like with Kira, she was really torn because she really wanted, you know, she's a powerful female character. She would have wanted to tell this 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 young woman, you know, make your choice, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time... That would have prevented her, her from, from being existing. born yeah. because her mother would have never been born. Yeah, so she just told her to uh, go talk to the guy. See if he's going to be there for you. Mm, yeah. And then, and then just let it go how it will. Mm-hmm. And in a fight between Kira and Liberate, Kellogg's teenage grandmother is killed, meaning that he will never be born in this timeline. Are you sure it wasn't his mom? It was his grandmother? I'm pretty sure it was his grandmother. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay, it might have been his mother. <laughs> but she was... Nah, whatever. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I, I was sure until you started second-guessing me. <laughs> Anyway, so this is what confirms for everyone that, oh, you can kill the young versions of people. It doesn't stop the time travelers, though. No, it does not. Yep. Uh, Julian Randall joins the anti-corporate activists, and when he tries to take action, the police, assisted by Kira, shoot his and Alex's father. Stepfather. Or, well, stepfather. His father, yeah. Alex's stepfather. Mm-hmm prompting Julian to take on the ideology of Theseus. Basically, he becomes Theseus. At least he starts to do so. Mm -hmm. Kira then meets Jason, who has unfortunately deteriorated in his mental stability since 1992. Mm -hmm. Hard being a time traveler. Yeah. And Kagami suicide bombs a building in City Plaza on the same day where he is actually born. Yeah, remember that, that time in the earlier timeline where he said he was born? It's the same day he dies. Mm-hmm. In 2013, Kira's mother is born, and her partner, Elena, dies. Liberate splits its loyalties between the remaining leaders, Travis and Sonia. Kellogg offers to fund Alec to create his own company, Sad Tech, by using the funds that, he's, that he has accumulated from knowing which companies to bank on. Mm-hmm. And uh, Liberate releases Flash, the drug, to the public via gangs. Julian Randall's acquitted of all charges thanks to Liberate influencing the judge. 
Mm -hmm. And to combat liberate terrorists, police departments begin accepting funding from Pyron and other corporate sources. Mr. Escher, the owner of Pyron, hires a spy, her name is Emily, to pose as Alec's girlfriend. And then he offers a job to Alec to work for Pyron. Yeah, keep in mind Mr. Escher is Alec's biological father. But he doesn't tell his son that. Mm-hmm. Now, Liberate reunites, but their um, their tech, Lucas, starts to become mentally unstable. He's their technical guy. He was the one who uh, coordinated their efforts. Yeah, but he seems to, like, just be mentally losing it for some reason. Mm-hmm. I, I wonder, do they ever really explain what caused that? And considering what also happened to Jason, I can't help but wonder that maybe there's just a chance of a time traveler going unstable. Maybe he was getting visions of an alternate future or something. <laughs> I forget. I think it's more likely that they just, you know, mentally deteriorated. <laughs> Fair enough. So Mr. Escher reveals to Alec, finally, that he is his father. Alec's girlfriend, Emily. What was her? Yeah, Emily, gets killed in a fight between Liberate and the Freelancers. So he repairs the time travel device and goes a week into the past to try to prevent her death. Once Alec left and changed the timeline, this timeline began to cease to exist. Kira ends up joining the freelancers in exchange for use of a time travel device that they have. The one, one that they have is called the lifeboat, which will let her hitchhike on the time travel that Alec did and jump to the same point in time he did so that it counts as the same time travel event. Mm -hmm. She does that, and that's, this is why it's called the Doom timeline. Yeah. So now we have the fifth timeline, the militant one. Mm hmm You will see why it's called that. In 2013, this timeline diverges when Alec goes back in time that week to save Emily from dying. And Kira follows him, and now there are two Alecs and two Kiras. Emily kills her boss, Mr. Escher not knowing that he is Alec's father. He thinks that she thinks that by killing him that she will not no longer have to spy on Alec for him, mm -hmm. not realizing the grave mistake she made. Yeah. So the previous timelines Kira ends up getting shot and killed by the freelancer Curtis Shen, who's still around by this time. Mhm. Mm but the version of Kira that traveled back with Alec, the freelancer Kira. Yes, is tasked with deciding which Alec is more likely to bring her future into being. The you know, the freelancers they tell her you have to choose which one to keep, which one to get rid of. Mhm. Mm and that's the difference between the Alec that went back one week and the... The, the Alec that's been in this timeline. Mm hmm So one Alec forgives his girlfriend, Emily, because he saved her life and he experienced her loss, you know? Mm hmm The other Alec, however, ends up rejecting her for her betrayal because he never experienced losing her. This other Alec also ends up inheriting Pyron from his dead father. Mr. Escher. Yeah. So Emily's choice to kill him kind of backfired. Mm hmm Now, Kira ends up choosing this Alec who took over Pyron over the other Alec, and she hands over the other Alec to the freelancers, and they imprison him. In like a dark hole so that no one can know he exists. Mm hmm In 2014, two companies, Sonmanto and Fermitas, that they, they, they begin competing covertly for bioweapons. Uh, you may have noticed Sonmanto is a parody of the, comp the real company, Monsanto. Mm -hmm. And Fermitas is probably a parody of some weapons company. I don't know. I don't know either. Julian ends up trying to expose what they're doing, but Sonmanto feeds him false intel to discredit his public image as Theseus. Now, Alec, the Alec who's Head of Pyron now. Well, the, the other Alex gone. Don't worry about yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Uses his position at Pyron to reverse engineer the chip from the dead Kira to accelerate the technological development of the company, and it it was just a really reckless decision. It was also a really uh, a really macabre one, considering that he couldn't tell anyone else that there's a dead time traveler here. 
Yeah. So, and so he, he ends up having to go himself and drill into her head to get the chip. Yeah, because he couldn't let anyone know, least mm. of all Kira herself. Yeah, so he had to cut open the head of his friend. Mm-hmm. Kellogg ends up, he use, he's been using his knowledge of future events to amass power and resources, but he does it to such an extent that he ends up rising to a high position within a certain company known as Pyron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, several violent corporate and anti-corporate skirmishes with future technologies being introduced to both sides leads to chaotic riots. By the 2020s, the economic collapse happens sooner than expected, while governments still retain some power. To end the conflict, they attempt to nationalize the ever-growing powerful corporations. In the 2030s, when the governments attempted to force mega corporations to nationalize, the corporations resisted and fought back to retain their autonomy. This grew into a direct war between governments and corporations. Neither the governments nor the corporations were unified, leading to a fractured world of shifting allegiances and feudal states, some fascist and militant. In 2039, Kellogg is a warlord of one of the largest militant states with its capital in the ruins of Vancouver. He's older and a capable leader, but he suffers from kidney failure. Kellogg ends up sending a guy named Brad Tonkin back with a beacon and a desperate mission to escape this horrid future for a better past. He, he used some cobbled together time travel technology left over from the previous time travelers. Mm -hmm. So this leads us to what we call the final timeline, the yes. sixth and final one. Mm hmm. Now, in 2014, this timeline diverges when Brad goes back in time to around the time Somanto discredited Theseus. He brought a beacon with him, but he got hurt and lost his memory and lost the beacon. Alec ends up using his position at Pyron to reverse it, the engineer the CMR chip from the dead Kira, just like in the previous timeline. Mm -hmm. Now, Alec uses this technology to develop the Halo monitoring device early. And it is very advanced for this time, but it's not quite there as far as um, functionality, and mm. it ends up having pretty severe side effects. There's a pretty high margin of error that like 3% of the users will get some real like mental violence and whatnot, or like they start acting out and having seizures sometimes. Mm -hmm. And you know, 3% might not sound like much, but when you're releasing a millions, that's like 300,000 people. Yeah. At this time, freelancer Curtis, the one that's still alive, he ends up going rogue, and he starts to get his own agenda. And Kellogg uses his knowledge of future events to his advantage and ends up with his position in Pyron just like before. Kira and Brad raid the freelancers together to find Alec and the Beacon. They end up working together to get what they want. However, Curtis, the freelancer who went rogue, he intervenes, kills all of the freelancers there, and finds that they had actually imprisoned the Traveler long ago. Curtis lets him go free. And now, in 2015, after some soul-searching, Kara, Brad, Alec, Emily, and Liberate unite against the Pyron Alec and his corporation during Halo's launch. The United Group attempts to sabotage Pyron, leading to a fight where their Alec kills Pyron's Alec. Mm-hmm. And in Alec versus Alec. Two in Alex go in. One Alec comes out. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Now, in this turmoil, Kellogg ends up taking control of Pyron from Pyron Alec. Oh, yeah. Pyron Alec, he thought he was such a big shot. He thought he was going to be like the next Steve Jobs, right? Yes. But little did he know that he had actually been signing forms that increasingly gave Kellogg a larger stake in the company. Yeah. So now when the new Alec takes over, the rest of the world, they didn't know there was two, right? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter because Alex no longer the, has a controlling stake in the company. Mm -hmm. Not even a stake. He yeah. gets essentially kicked out by the board. That's now run by Kellogg. Yeah. Now, uh, Brad activates the beacon to see if they change the future, hoping that it wouldn't work. Instead, it signals for an assault squad in power armor to arrive from the militant timeline in 2039. Yeah, so the beacon essentially acts as a connecting point from the past timeline. Mm -hmm. 
if if they had gone into the future again, then it would have created a new timeline. But using the beacon, they can arrive to this timeline since they're without not, creating a new one. Yeah, they're not changing the past, but rather changing this timeline's future. Mm-hmm. So Kellogg ends up receiving a message from his older self. The people, the guys in power armor, give it to him. The older Kellogg asks him to fund the mission for these troopers, who answer to him, but withhold some information in what they claim is an attempt to avoid paradoxes. Yeah. Now, the soldiers that now follow Kellogg buy a specific building and begin building a time machine powered by antimatter. Julian, meanwhile, publishes the Theseus Manifesto after some hesitation. Kellogg has doubts about these soldiers who uh, rented that entire... Oh, can I say this one? Okay. I really like this one. Uh, so, yeah, because Kellogg, he has doubts about these soldiers. He's not sure if he can trust his older self. The soldiers, they rent an entire warehouse for a secret, but they don't tell him what it is. He becomes so paranoid that he starts looking into what it is. Kellogg realizes that there's one person in the world that he knows he cannot trust. And for that's he, himself. What he finds in the warehouse is a kidney dialysis machine. You remember what old Kellogg's problem was, right? Yeah, kidney failure. Exactly. He needs a donor. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who don't get it, they wanted to take a kidney from young Kellogg and give it to old Kellogg. I think we made it pretty clear. You don't have to spell it out. <laughs> okay, fine. Now, the Traveler ends up approaching Alec and uses his power to create a mental... His, his, his like, futuristic techno power. Mm -hmm. To create a mental link between this Alec and the old corporate Alec from an old timeline where he inspires corporate Alec to invent time travel, specifically mentioning that Kira was the one to be sent back. And if you remember, this was the vision that corporate Alec had, which caused him to invent time travel. Mm-hmm. So Kellogg has Alec program his time travel device with some coordinates. But Alec, he's clever, he gives him the wrong coordinates on purpose. Mm -hmm. Now Kellogg soldiers complete that time machine, which opens a doorway to the old timeline, allowing more soldiers to cross over for an invasion. Brad thought it was a lifeboat, like uh, they were going to get to go back and like feel save, betrayed. Yeah, like save the families of the future and relocate. But no, it's an invasion. Mm -hmm. Now the doorway is able to avoid creating alternate timelines and works within the same timeline. Yeah, exactly. So like, it's it's a bridge. It's like it's like it was supposed to be kind of like a lifeboat from the old timeline, so those people could survive. But instead, they're just invading this new timeline mm -hmm. in the past. Yeah. So Kellogg he tries to flip a soldier Vasquez. He tries to flip the soldier to his side and have her be his queen. When she refuses, he kills her so that he can escape. Before she dies, though, she ends up telling him that she was his daughter. Yeah. From the future. Mm hmm. Now, the younger, paranoid Kellogg escapes through the doorway that... Uh, Using his time travel yeah, device. But doing so terminates the link to the old timeline. Kieran, the police, managed to kill all of the soldiers that got through the doorway. So he ruined the older Kellogg's plans by escaping. Mm-hmm. So Kira takes the other time travel device, the, uh, the one that the other Alec had brought with him from the Doom timeline. And she uses it to go through the doorway to finally go back to her own time in 2077. Mm -hmm. Now, Alec, the remnants of Liberate, and Kira's partner Carlo Carlos have learned a lot and they vow to make the future better. In 2077, Kira arrives to a new utopian future where the government isn't oppressive nor is there a global corporate congress. Alec built a building in that exact spot, waiting for her to, uh, to return with a cheerful Kagame. Because he was born and he was, grew up not in the corporate future this time. Mm -hmm. The future's repaired. Kira finally sees her own son once again. She's finally been able to return to her family. Unfortunately, her son is playing with his mother. This timeline's Kira. Alec says that maybe one day they can work something out. Mm -hmm. 
In the far future, the Traveler returns to this utopia as a replica of the future from which he came, finally able to return home. Naturally, he tells this timeline Traveler not to depart. So as not to start the whole series over again. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's pretty much Continuum. Yep. So uh, what do you think? I think that it was an amazing use of time travel, honestly. I liked how it was mostly consi con uh, consistent. The only problem was the militant one at the end. That was a that they were definitely trying something different there. Yeah. But I really liked it how like it wasn't magic. Oh wait, I think we forgot to talk about something. Oh yeah, we did. Um remember how Kellogg used it to go somewhere before Kira did? Oh, yeah, how he tried to escape and ended up closing the other connection. Yeah, Kira went to the future. Well, where did Kella go? He thought he was going to escape somewhere and regroup. But Alex's at, but, false coordinates yeah. made him arrive in the prehistoric past. Well, pre-Columbian. He ends up in Native America in Vancouver. Yeah. And, like, he's literally, he encounters a Native American mm -hmm. in, like, a jungle or forest kind of situation. Yeah. So, yeah, that that stinks for him. But, uh -huh. but and the, so that means that he always dies before he's able to ever even do anything to affect the future. Exactly. The utopian future is the one without Kellogg. Yep. Because he was just really opportunistic, always trying to be greedy. And that's exactly what the corporations represent. Even when it was military, you know, as long as he has power, he's, he's happy. Mm -hmm. He's literally even willing to kill his own self. Yeah. And the other him killed his own daughter. Yeah. He's just a backstabber all around. Even to himself. Yeah. Now, uh, what, should, what should I say? Oh, oh, also, when he went back in time, it didn't create an alternate timeline because he used the stable link that the soldiers had created. Oh, yes. So so essentially, in the final timeline, even though it diverged later on, originally, basically, there's this exception to the rule that Kellogg had already died in the distant past. Mm -hmm. If they had looked, and they could have probably found his bones or something. Yeah. So... I really liked the show. I really liked that it had a powerful female character. Also, it had really good representation with race. Oh, yes. I, I completely agree. Um, the main characters, meh. I mean, Kira, Alec, Carlos, most of the police were all Caucasian. Carlos isn't Caucasian. What is Carlos? Uh, some kind of Latino. Okay, sorry. My yeah. bad. <laughs> He's not Caucasian. I didn't, I didn't remember. I'm sorry. Okay. But I, I was saying like he's part of the police. Most of the police were Caucasian. There are some black guys in there. Sure, but most of them. Mm -hmm. Like the uh, assistant Betty, the chief Dylan. Oh, yeah. Any of the named characters, mostly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And Liberate, on the other hand, is completely mixed. You know, you have Travis, African-American. Sonia, I think she's uh, Asian of some sort. I think so, yeah. And then Curtis, he's Chinese. Oh, you know, I bet Sonya's Korean. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I'm just guessing here. Mm -hmm. Anyway, point is, lots of diversity. Although they were terrorists, <laughs> but they did support democracy. Yeah. So, yay. <laughs> they're trying to get rid of the corporations. Honestly, yeah. They're, they're really, well, at the beginning of the show, they're really presented as terrorists. It's like, they, they really... They say this multiple times throughout the show. It's like, I may agree with your message, but I do not condone your tactics, you know? Yeah. But throughout the show, you end up seeing many glimpses and flashbacks of the corporate timeline. You see how hard they had it and how they tried. They tried peaceful alternatives. And they only after that did they resort to more violent means. Yeah, and you end up learning that, you know, they just kind of had, like... Obviously, you don't condone what they did, but Kira ends up agreeing with them on a lot of things in the end. And that's why they end up uniting to fight a bigger threat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I understand you. Like, I, I can't condone that either. But I also can't really say that if I was in that position, I would have done anything differently. Yeah, exactly. I do really like how the show is from Kira's perspective. So when you first see Liberate, you see them from her perspective. Yeah, because she works then, for the corporations. Yes. And then as the show goes on, you get to see more and more of them as she learns more and more about them. And 
that's when, you know, her loyalty to the corporations, is tested. to the system, ends up getting tested. And she ends up realizing that maybe that wasn't the best future for everybody, the one that she came from. Mm-hmm. But I was glad she was able to still have a happy ending. Mm-hmm. But because of the fact that she ends up choosing the world over just restoring her old timeline somehow, mm-hmm. uh, that means that there's a new, happier Kira in that new world. Yep. The way Alex says that she could still have a relationship, I'd like to think that she could be like alt-universe aunt mom, aunt corporate mom to, <laughs> to her son or something. Maybe. I don't know. Or maybe she could go have her own kid in that timeline. No, she wants her son. Well, I know, but he has a mom. Oh, one, that's one thing she I actually... really respects that. That's one thing I really liked about Kira was that... Uh, even though she was a main female lead, like she just did not give a crap about romance. Oh, yes. Uh, the entire show, her motivation is her son. Even though she was married and had a husband. Who cheated on her. Yeah, she did. It, he was not her motivator. Her motivator was seeing her son again. Mm-hmm. Until later on in the series, she starts to feel conflicted in that maybe her mission isn't right. And so she has to kind of weigh whether her son's more important or the fate of the world. Mm-hmm. And I really like that you don't really get to see a perspective of a mother being the main character, mm-hmm. you know? And even though her son isn't in the, actually in the show that much, like, her being a mother colors everything that she does. It bleeds into everything that she is and does during the show. So, yeah, you, you can really feel for her. And, I mean, I don't think that... Not having romance necessarily makes a character better written. I mean, we talked about how it'd be really cool to see more representation of different orientations in Mm -hmm. shows. Mm -hmm. But it is also kind of refreshing to see how you can have a female lead character in the show not just be about emotions and love and whatnot. Yeah, you don't have to have a love interest. Although she's not an emotionless robot. There are two times in the entire show where she she falls for a guy, but she only ever sleeps with them once each. And then she just moves on because she has a mission to do. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and for the record, the first guy she sleeps with, you know, we're not talking about her husband that she had a son with, by the way, because mm-hmm. that's not even shown. But yeah. the first guy that she sleeps with is Kellogg. What? Yeah. Was it Kellogg? I thought she slept with Carlos. No, she never slept with Carlos. She and Carlos were partners. Like... I think I think I think it's like maybe maybe that's an American thing where you see a female and male like cop partners on, on, or detective partners, and you just kind of assume like oh there's tension here they're gonna get together eventually. <laughs> no, they never did. So ever. who else did she sleep with other than Kellogg? Well, I wanted to say why she slept with Kellogg. Oh, okay. Because uh, this was before Kellogg was revealed to be you know an evil manipulative mastermind, but it was after he retired from Liberate. Mm-hmm. According to him, he just wanted to live the good life in 2012 and make money off of his foreknowledge. He turned out to be a piece of crap. Yeah. But anyway, Kira had just had a long day and Kellogg was charming her. And so she was like, you know what? Fine, I deserve this. (laughs) (laughs) And the other time was with Brad. Oh, yeah. The time traveler from, uh, from the militant timeline. And the reason is they were both time travelers from dystopian futures so they had a lot in common, despite how different their futures were. Mm-hmm. But they ended up kind of having a bit of a tension when he ended up helping the troopers take over and whatnot. Yeah. At the last minute, he did give in because he realized they lied to him and that it wasn't a lifeboat. Mm-hmm. It was an invasion. So ah, I just like this show so much. Yeah, it was amazing. And we had such a good time watching it. And this is literally just an overview of the most important plot points like Go go watch the show. <laughs> yeah, you definitely should. And I mean, the show is uh, it's like a few years old, but it's not that old. It's still really good. Yeah, it's still on Netflix. You can find it on Netflix. I'm sure you can find it elsewhere. Well, I hope it's still on. It, there. Oh, it is. I've seen oh, it. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, that's uh, our dissertation on Continuum. I hope you guys like this deep dive. I know it's probably not a uh, franchise that a lot of you have heard before. Maybe some of you had. Tell us what you think. 
But if it's something you hadn't heard, tell us what you think about listening to franchises that you just don't know about. We wanted to try to still be interesting, even if you don't have any intention on watching it. At least you can hear a story of a show out there without having to devote how many episodes were there? Hundred, a hundred hours <laughs> to uh, to investing in a new show. I think I think we're good. Yeah, it uh, was a great time. <laughs> And so much time travel. Oh, I just, I love time travel. I know. I know. We should have just like an episode on time travel in general. Because <laughs> I know some people think like, oh, it's a overused or overcomplicated plot device. And I'm like, you know what? It can be. But if you do it well. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this has been Game Theorem. You can check us out on all of our social media. If you have a comment or suggestion or question of... Send it in to our email at gametheorems at gmail.com. You can go to our social media. We have a Facebook, a Twitter, a YouTube channel, an Instagram. We have iTunes. And a Tumblr. And a Tumblr, yes. So check them all out. You can find the link in the description. Assuming you're looking at a link in the description. Depending on which thing you're looking at re- listening to this. I forgot we're not looking. It's it's a podcast. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could technically be looking at the waveform if you're just really into it, but that's a tech joke that I'm not sure people are going to get. <laughs> Let us know if you found that funny. This is Game Theorem. Bye. Bye. Bye.